Hi, I'm Lee. Thanks for joining me. Have you wanted to play City Skylines without running out of money? Are you frustrated because your cities are choked with traffic? In this series, More Money, Less Traffic, I'll show you how to deal with these two problems most players face in City Skylines. In this video, I'll show you how to upgrade to a city of 20,000 from a town of 7,000. To do so, we're only going to use the vanilla game. So we won't need any mods or DLCs, although I do have some DLCs and custom assets installed. If I use any of them, I'll be sure to let you know in the video, and I'll leave a link in the description. We'll go through all the milestones up to Megalopolis. That's 80,000 people. Along the way, we'll avoid financial trouble and deal with traffic problems. Now this is a concept tutorial. We're not going to be covering gameplay mechanics, so if you're looking for gameplay basics such as how to build a road or set up a bus line, check out other videos or even the in-game tutorial. Three things you will learn in this tutorial series include 1. Lean construction. Only build what you need when you need it. 2. Sound financial management, so we don't run out of money. And 3. Good urban design. And this goes to more than just Road layout, this has a lot to do with zoning, which causes a lot of the problems that I see most players uh, posting for help experiencing. Now, since this is a concept tutorial, we're not going to concern ourselves too much with aesthetics. We're going to use a simple grid city, which I know is super ultra boring. I don't build my cities like that normally, uh, but it does keep things quick and simple so I can illustrate concepts and expand quickly. Now, in our first video, we covered most of our critical financial decisions with many of our new and improved city services introduced in our last video. Now, beginning with this video, and especially over the remainder of our series, our focus is going to shift almost completely away from finance, and you'll see why later. And we're going to focus mostly on demonstrating good urban design and traffic planning. We'll introduce the last important city services in this video. We'll upgrade our arterial roads and we'll begin to add some office and high density development. Now to review, we already have our three basic services from our first video, roads, electricity, and water. In our first video, we also added our first landfill and elementary school. We also added a police station, which we upgraded in our second video to a police headquarters. In our second video, we added a firehouse, which we upgraded to a fire station. We added a clinic, our first high school, and our first cemetery. Now let's take a look at everything that's going on in the game here in our info view panel. Uh, first off, we look at electricity, and we see that everything is nicely powered. We are running a little short. So we're obviously going to need a power plant soon. I'm not really going to add that to the list like I did in the last video, though, because we're going to be adding a lot of power plants over the course of the rest of the series, uh, simply because we're expanding our city so dramatically. Water, uh, once again, we're going to be expanding that. We're in pretty good shape right now, uh, but we will definitely uh, be taking care of this as an ongoing thing, so I'm not even going to put that on the list. Uh, something I will put on the list are incinerators. Our landfill usage is at 61% and we're not processing our garbage in any other way. Uh, we're just storing it in a landfill which is going to pile up so we definitely want to build incinerators which we just gained access to at the end of the last video. Um, now education, we've got a couple of elementary schools right here and we have a little less than half of our citizens are yet uneducated that is going to change over the course of time as we keep educating our sims with more elementary schools and high schools as well as universities. Um, we have educated about over half of our sims. Uh, we will probably need to build a high school here really shortly. Really shortly. Uh, we have already uh, built up enough that we've got 25% of our sims are well educated that's good for a lot of level 2 industrial commercial and office jobs but we're going to need highly educated sims which we're going to need uh, to university to achieve that too we also just gained access to at the end of the last video 
our citizens are not super duper happy in our residential neighborhoods, uh, but they are smiling now, which is good because we added our fire coverage. That was a big need for them. We're going to be adding parks, so our city won't be super duper boring for our citizens uh, living in homes. Our commercial will probably improve as well, and our industrial happiness is already pretty high because we're letting them pollute with reckless abandon. Uh, we'll be trying to upgrade some of those with our parks as well so that hopefully we'll get uh, less pollution and better jobs. Healthcare looks pretty good. We've got a medical clinic. It doesn't cover quite all of our city, but it gets the bulk of it. That's okay. We don't need to be perfect there right now. Uh, we just need to have enough so that if a sim gets sick from uh, noise or some other um, strange it, you know, thing that happens, then we can take care of that. Uh, we have our one cemetery right here, and that is covering most of our city pretty well. Uh, we will be building more of those as well as crematoriums towards the end of this tutorial. Now, what you see here is our levels. You can see we've got our industrial all laid out along our highway on the fringe of our town. We have our commercial area here in the center of our downtown surrounded by our residential zones. This setup makes it so that it's really convenient for shopping access for our residents. It makes it really convenient for them to get to work up here in our industrial parks. And it makes it so that our industrial parks with the pollution, as you can see here, isolated from our industrial uh, to our just our industrial area and away from our residences uh, makes it so that we don't have to uh, deal with any suffering land values as a result of that. Now in our downtown you'll see in the center we've got our commercial development right there. So far it's some of our only commercial buildings. That's okay that we have them right there with our residential area. Uh, we will be expanding that drastically uh, but we're going to do our best to keep it from our residential areas so those can stay nice and quiet and keep our land value and our sims happy. Uh, traffic, let's take a look back at that. We have one spot right here in the center uh, where Main Street and Mill Street cross at our highway interchange. That's a busy area. Our traffic flow is at 92, now 94%. That's going to drop that number becomes more and more meaningless as time goes on. The only thing that really matters is are, tr are the cars and trucks able to get through intersections or are they backing up further and further as time goes on? Uh, if they are getting through, I don't care what this number is, it can be 50%. It doesn't really matter. As long as people are able to get to work and deliveries are able to get through and people are able to go shopping, then the city will continue to function rather well um, but we do want to keep an eye on this because there's a good possibility it could back up in the future our fire coverage is really good we have our fire station right here and it covers most of our city we'll be building more of those as we expand same here with our crime our police headquarters is covering everything quite nicely we haven't built any public transportation yet, and we won't be in this video, but we will be touching on that and really getting into it much deeper in the next uh, couple of videos. Now, this is an important screen here. We've got our population uh, details. This gives us some demographics, but the most important demographic we care about right now is unemployment. We have over 7,000 in population, but we don't have enough jobs for all of them, so we need to increase the amount of jobs that we've got by increasing the amount of commercial, uh, which we're really low on right now, and uh, most likely will be increasing the size for industrial areas as well as adding some office development since our sims are better educated now. Our imports and exports, we are importing uh, about half as much as we're exporting. Most of what we're exporting are goods from, from Mill Park here, and we've got forestry products that we're exporting to factories in other cities. We're importing a lot of raw forestry goods because we're not producing everything that we need locally. But that's not too bad because we don't see any imports of forestry products in our generic zones. 
So that means that everything that is being produced over here is being used over here if it's needed. Also, we're not importing any goods into our commercial zones. That's good because that means we're consuming the manufactured products that we're making, which is good for our economy overall. So we have good uh, cycles feeding into each other there. Our land value is increasing around our downtown area. That's going to continue, especially as we add parks, which is going to drastically drive up that number of 12 credits per square meter. Our natural resources, we've got Forest Park taking advantage of the forest alongside the highway. It's not super dense though, so that's why we're having to import a lot of forestry products. Uh, finally, we'll take a look at our parks and see that we still don't have any. That's a really big priority right there too. And our traffic routes. As I mentioned in the last video, we want our main roads to have as little stopping as we can possibly have. So what we have here is High Street and Main Street have minimal stop signs so people can cross one side of town to the other on the fastest roads. We don't want them crossing town on the residential streets. That's going to increase the noise factor for them and decrease their land value. We also have a few secondary roads right here and we'll be continuing to expand out our street grid as we go on. Uh, right now we're only a one or two traffic light city. That's going to change as we increase size and we increase traffic. So now that we've assessed all of our needs, let's see what we are in for. We already achieved the status of big town with 7,000 in population that gave us access to build high density residential and commercial zones as well as office. We've also gained access to two critical buildings, the incineration plant, which will make it so we can get rid of our landfills and save an awful lot of real estate there. And we also have access to our university now, which will allow us to create well-educated sims, or highly educated sims, I should say, from our well-educated sims. As we progress to 9,500 in population, we'll become a small city. And that will gain access to rail, which we will not be building in this tutorial, but we will in the next part of our series. We'll become a big city of 16,000, and that will mean that we can build a water treatment plant, which will allow us to stop discharging raw sewage into our river, which is a good idea, I would think. And then we'll be able to build crematoriums, which have about the same effect as incinerators do on garbage, except that crematoriums take care of our sims when they've passed through their uh, earthly course here. Uh, we will be building crematoriums so that we won't have to build cemeteries uh, and so we'll be able to empty cemeteries when they fill up. I usually leave some cemeteries because I kind of like leaving them in town, but uh, that's up to you. We can replace them all with crematoriums if we like. Uh, finally, we'll end up with a grand city at 20,000 at the conclusion of this tutorial. And then we'll move on in the next tutorial to 32,000 when we become a capital city and a colossal city is where we'll end and then we'll gain access to the best power plant in the game which is the nuclear power plant mainly because it takes up a lot less real estate and gives off a lot less pollution which is a huge upgrade from all the coal plants we're going to be building so with those being covered let's get to building ourselves some incinerators so we can start emptying out these landfills I'm going to build them all the way out here next to my highway because I want the pollution to all stay in my industrial area over here. I'm going to need several of these. I'm going to build one over here that's close to this landfill uh, because I need to empty these in order to demolish them, which is one of the reasons why I don't like landfills, besides the fact that I have to keep building them if I use them instead of incinerators. And we just need to add enough so that that garbage processing status gets above the yellow and into the green. And now we've achieved that. Uh, I need to build one more water pipe over here. All right, so 
Now we're going to begin emptying this landfill. This should be a little easier because it's right next to an incinerator. Hopefully the garbage trucks won't make a huge long uh, trip to go empty this. Uh, we are having a lot of backup here. That's mainly just because the garbage trucks are all coming out at once in the same, same time. So this intersection is going to get backed up a little bit, but that's okay. It's not going to be too bad. We'll be able to deal. It'll eventually clear out. Okay, so now that we've got our incinerators in place and we're emptying our garbage uh, facility here, our landfills, uh, we'll start with this one and then we'll empty the other one. I don't like to empty too many at a time because this does uh, make it so that we have to build more incinerators before we uh, started the garbage processing. I think that we would have probably uh, not taxed this as much. We'll see. Either way, now let's get to expanding our city because we need a place to put our university and uh, we also need to make it so we can expand our commercial offerings in town here. Now I'm going to go straight to the four lane road. This is the first time I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the decorative one with trees uh, because it lowers noise pollution and as we increase traffic on these roads we're definitely going to see a measure of noise pollution. Also, the ones with the trees just look better. So I'm going to keep with my 10 by 20 grid size. Okay, so I have built out my city grid here. I'm going to place my university right here on this corner. And I'm going to zone some hot, some low density commercial right here along my new street here. That'll push the electricity up the street. Now the other place I'm going to put some low density commercial is right over here. And since I'm going to be taking away a lot of residential areas, I'm going to go ahead and zone this to be residential right here along the edge. I'm going to keep an eye on this so that as it grows, I will be able to continue to grow the population of my city. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because as you can see here I've got a couple of big roads right here on the edge of town. Well that doesn't do me a whole lot of good because most of my traffic is on the inside of town and out here towards my highway interchanges. So what I want to do is I want to increase the capacity of this road all the way across so that I've got two major arterials running across uh, the length and the width of my city. And in order to, um, to facilitate that, I need to get rid of these residential zones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by dezoning along Main Street here. And I want to be five away since the street will be twice as wide. It'll be five units away uh, from there. And I'm only going to take away the residential areas because I have not, uh, I want to put my commercial zones along these main arterial streets because they will be able to handle the traffic from all the shoppers and all the deliveries and they'll also be able to handle uh, traffic stopping for trucks eventually I'll have bus lines that will run down these streets so I really need to make sure that I have uh, minimal issues with that expansion as we go on so I'm dezoning that uh, and I'm going to upgrade as I go. So here we add some commercial and I will let that fill in. Now the other reason why I do it this way is because this allows me uh, to have these zones here fill up. Eventually I'll get to the center of town where I have most of my commercial zones and out here on the fringes I want to make sure that I've replaced that commercial 
capacity, especially if I'm running the game and not pausing it. Um, so that that way, especially with the tax base, uh, some of these have upgraded already to level 2. I'd like some of these to at least be here, if not level 2, at least be level 1 buildings, so that the Sims have somewhere to shop while I am widening out this road. So I'm going to continue and do that, and I will be back as soon as I get it done. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I need another high school. Um, it looks like this need for that has really subsided since I've taken a huge bite out of my population. That's not going to last forever though, so I'm just going to go ahead and build a high school right here on the other side of my town. Uh, the reason why I'm going to build it there when it's really pretty close to this high school over here is because I'm going to move this high school anyway, but eventually I'm going to have a huge amount of population right here in the center of my downtown as I zone high density. So I want to make sure that my high school is somewhere close enough to be able to soak in all those extra students. So having two high schools on either side of a dense area will actually uh, work out to my advantage in the future. I'm going to go ahead and place my first park. It's actually going to be a plaza right here at this corner. That's a spot that I want to have, and I'm going to build an even bigger park right here in the center of my downtown. But I figure I will get started with it since that area right there is already clear. Let me zone commercial here. I'm going to go ahead and, and dezone this area here because I'm going to rezone that office very shortly. Now, I've built enough zones that I have quite a lot of commercial. In fact, there's not enough people here to work all the commercial jobs that have now become available. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on the center of my city. Now I need to dezone both sides of the road in order to be able to build uh, and increase the size of one of these roads. So I'm going to go ahead and dezone this half of downtown. And I'm going to move this elementary school up here uh, somewhere. I'm also going to build a park right here. I will have offices and even a little high density commercial right here once this all moves out. Okay, so my half of downtown here has already moved out. I'm going to put a park there, and as you'll see shortly, this area here between these two parks has now become much more valuable. It's going to improve even more as I add more parks to my city center. But I'm not going to add them all right next to each other because I want them to be spread out. The effects will overlap and eventually make it very easy to get upgraded zones. So I'm going to go ahead and put some high density commercial. I'm going to leave a space because that is eventually going to get filled in with a road. Uh, not going to do too much of it because I don't want to overwhelm my road network before I know how much traffic is going to end up on it. Also, I don't have any way of handing all the traffic. This is a bottleneck right here. I don't want to have a whole bunch of traffic coming through here and then not being able to handle it all. So I'm going to zone commercial right there on the other side of the square. I'm going to put office here. Now, since this is going to attract more traffic, these gravel roads really aren't going to work for me anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade those. They're not arterial, they're definitely not arterial, but they're not secondary streets either. Uh, but they are important streets because there will be a lot more sims on them. And uh, it just looks really messed up to have expensive zones on gravel roads. It just doesn't happen in the real world, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these. I'm going to do that all around uh, my city center along High Street and Main Street so that even the secondary roads have pretty direct access 
going across. Okay, so I've got this easier side of town already dezoned and rezoned. Now I'm going to work on the other side. I'll dezone that there, and I'm going to go ahead and dezone a swath here. Now I want to move this high school. I'm going to move it over here. It's 5 by 6, so I'm going to go ahead and dezone this as well. That elementary school is going to need to be moved, so I'm going to dezone a 6x4 swath of land right here. And I'll just go ahead and take care of that area here so I can upgrade that part of the road as well. Ah, and I already made a mistake here. I need to move my park over one square. Thankfully with parks, this isn't a super expensive thing to do. I will lose a building or two out of it. Just gonna make sure that goes back as big as it can. So, made a little mistake there. I didn't leave enough room for the expanded street. Now it'll fit. I'm just gonna go ahead and expand all of those. I can move that elementary school now. which will allow me to upgrade that section of road so I can move my police and fire across the street. Then I can upgrade this section and then move my high school. I'm not gonna put it right on the street, I'm gonna put it a little off. Now my medical clinic is a different story. We need 64,000, 65,000 credits in order to build a hospital. My city is going to get a lot bigger. It's already quite a lot bigger. That medical clinic is not going to cut it. So I want to build a hospital that covers pretty much my entire city instead of just this part of it. Uh, so I need to go ahead and save some money. While I do that, I will go ahead and add some more zones over here. Okay, so I have my 65,000. I know I just zoned some of this, but that's too bad. <laughs> we just have to have them move. I've got plenty of zones right now that can handle all of this. Now let's zoom out a little bit and make sure we're getting this pretty well centered. I would say that that looks like a pretty good location for a hospital. I didn't want to put it right next to my city center. I wanted it to be somewhat close just because of geography. Uh, make sure it's pointed the right direction here. And there we have a hospital. Now since I really like to have medical office buildings next to my hospital, like they do in real life. I'm going to go ahead and dezone that, and I'll have some office buildings there. Now I can actually get rid of my medical clinic, upgrade that last piece of High Street, and fill in the last of these commercial zones. Now my last step over here, so that I have a complete four-lane road across on high and main streets, I'm going to go ahead and dezone this area over here. So that means I'm counting on this and maybe my cemetery to relay the electricity that I need for that this part of town was originally transmitting through. I need to also dezone right here and get rid of these two factories. I'm not going to rezone that industrial. I've got two commercial zones right here. Those have a little less truck traffic than do the regular industrial. Um, I want to cut down on the truck traffic that's close to the intersection because it creates a lot of bottlenecks. Since I'm getting a little impatient here, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade that. I'm going to put the grassy median in the center here. 
uh, which looks a little better, but it doesn't have the dead trees because of all the pollution. I'm going to zone a couple of office buildings, office zones right here along Main Street and Mill Street. And I'm going to go ahead and rezone that commercial area right through here. So that will grow back. Once that grows back, then I can attack this last section over here without worrying about losing my electrical connectivity across my city. Uh, once you set it up this way and you don't have power lines to replace it, well then you're in big trouble if you go ahead and dezone it before uh, you make some other way to get the electricity through. Let me go ahead and fill in some office zones here that I intended to put in. And I'll go ahead and fill in some more residential zones as well around the edges of town since that's starting to fill in nicely. And since we've got a little demand, I forgot to put that street right here in. Since we've got a little demand, I'm going to go ahead and add a little industrial zoning over here in my industrial park. As you can see, as the city has gotten bigger, we've got a lot more to do, a lot more going on. Let me make sure I have water over here. Yeah, we do. I can demolish that landfill, and now it's gone. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's take a look at our garbage processing status. That looks good. Okay, so we've got enough capacity. We can definitely empty out this landfill next. Once we remove that, I can put Prospect Street all the way through, and I won't have to have uh, this dead-end street right here. All right, so let's check and see our progress over here. It looks like this is probably built up enough to be transmitting the electricity. So let's go ahead and dezone this area over here so we can widen High Street. Alright, so things are moving along nicely. We're emptying out our last landfill. We are now over 7,000. Our population has rebounded quite a bit higher than what it was before. We've created a number of jobs. Let's take a look at our unemployment number here. It's a 7%, so we've added a considerable amount of jobs. We're going to need to add a considerable amount of sims. So it looks like it would be time to add more streets. But uh, before we do that, I need to do something else that we need to take care of because this happens every time you uh, add a four-lane road. Every intersection by default has a traffic signal. So we're going to go through and turn all of those off. Okay, so besides turning off all those traffic lights, I went through all the junctions and set up the stop signs. There's only one traffic light that I have turned on right now, and that is uh, besides Mill Street. I've got one here at the center of town just because that's going to be a busier and busier intersection as time goes on. So that is nice and clear. I may add a signal right here at Forest Avenue because of the heavy amount of traffic going through there. But we have our secondary roads and our arterials all set up. Now all we have to do is wait for things to fill in and we'll really have ourselves a city. Hopefully this will be enough that we'll at least be able to get close to 9500. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and increase the speed of the clock right now. So 
So our new neighborhoods have filled in pretty nicely. We've got a little more room to grow here. Let's look at our unemployment number. We're at 4%, so we have a lot more jobs. And as you can see, we've got a lot of abandonment because we don't have enough Sims moved in to work those jobs. It'll take us a little while to get up to a point where we'll have enough. And I think we're going to have to expand. If we look at our traffic flow, we don't have any big backups. We're still at a pretty high number up here as far as percentage goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and expand out here uh, on the edge of town to increase the size of the city. And we will uh, speed up the clock and fill that in and hopefully cruise right into 9,500 population and become a city for the very first time uh, from a town. So I've added that section of city down below. That should easily get us to 9,500. Something I need to take a look at here is land value. Let's take a look and see if we've done much to improve. Well, we've gone up to 22 credits per square meter. Uh, why don't we add some more parks? I'm going to just make sure that we have enough going on here that we have lots of land value in the city center. All right, so I've got good park access there in the city center. If you look at our leisure viewpoint, We've got a huge area right here that's going to definitely have high land value. We'll see lots of upgrading going on. Now, one of the other things I want to do is I want to get my industry to upgrade so that I have better jobs to offer our people who are moving into these more expensive neighborhoods. So industrial upgrades pretty much the same way as does everything else. Um, since it's good to have team sports, Near our industrial uh, for uh, company morale, I'm going to go ahead and build a couple of basketball courts up here. That'll improve the nearby residential area, but it'll also help to beef up uh, what we've got going on here with our industrial area too. So hopefully, we'll get to see some level two industrial move in, which pollutes a little less. Uh, if we can get it up to level three, that pollutes not at all. So I'm going to go ahead and add one more right here. That should take care of that section of town. Hopefully that will be a little more popular area to move in and do business. And it will make it so that uh, we have a lot more use of our industrial area without so much pollution. Uh, let's go ahead and check our, some of our city stats and make sure that we've got enough garbage processing and education. Looks like we need to build at least one or two more elementary schools. Our high schools are starting to get overcrowded, so let's go ahead and build elementary schools and high schools so that we'll have maximum coverage on our city here. Oh, and I just built high schools. I only need one of those. So let's build an elementary school here. And another one here. That'll help support our residential land value as well. Now, normally, I don't have all of these gravel roads in a city this size. Normally I have already gone to upgrading everything to being at least a paved road. I'm not doing that in this city just because I want you to see uh, the basic, you know, with the arterials, the big roads that handle lots of traffic at higher speeds. 
and then we have the secondary roads which handle traffic at mid, middle ro mid range speed uh, and then the the residential streets in the quiet neighborhoods uh, so that way you understand how to design the road network you basically want to start small have lots of little capillaries working up to larger vessels working up into arteries that will handle a lot of traffic and get you onto your highways uh, highways are even a step above arterials uh, you don't want to build so much highway because I mean look at this this takes up a lot of space even if you built an expressway which would have at grade intersections it's just complicated to build it takes up a lot of space it does move traffic around faster but that has drawbacks if we move traffic too fast and we only had a handful of interchanges or intersections then we're going to pull traffic out of the highway and into those intersections and it's going to just cause some serious bottlenecks when cars try to go through those intersections and can't make it so we're gonna we're gonna try to keep things simple make sure our local traffic has the street grid to rely on so there's lots and lots of multiple alternate routes that you can take to get from point A to point B the sims can pick the fastest one they won't all pick the same exact fastest one that's one of the advantages of a grid uh, even with a non-grid city where you don't have everything exactly measured out perfectly then sims don't always take exactly the fastest route every single time it might take a little slightly slower route sometimes that helps even with a non-grid city so that it, it, it doesn't it's not so exact that your sims are punished uh, for you having one fast route and only maybe three or four that are only slightly slower uh, the slightly slower routes still get traffic and the other thing I'm doing here to make sure that all of my arterials are where the highest concentration of traffic is is I'm making sure that I don't have anything uh, that creates a lot of traffic on my arterial on, on anything but my arterial roads um, so I only have residential traffic you know people going to work people going to shop people going to park going to the park uh, on my secondary roads and my side streets on my arterials that's where I have all of my commercial development and most of my big main buildings that cause a lot of traffic like hospitals universities parks things like that although parks don't have to be on main streets it's good if you have plenty of them in the neighborhood um, this makes it so that traffic doesn't pool in places that can't be handled so that's a really critical design piece I can actually make this city as large as I want to and as long as I have enough connections between neighborhoods I will never have to worry about building highways I have built cities that do not need highways um, it, it can be complicated you definitely have to understand the traffic dynamics in order to be successful uh, that's what this tutorial series is designed to do is to make it so that you can understand what happens with traffic um, make sure that you're separating it out into lots and lots of possible routes so that you don't end up with bottlenecks in your city that create traffic jams that just can't be solved uh, so a big part of that is zoning commercial along thoroughfares keeping your industrial traffic stuck towards the outside of town and, or at least along your highways and rail routes uh, we won't get into rail routes in this tutorial we will in the next one at least a little bit um, you also don't want to have you know like we have giant residential areas right through here and we're gonna have giant commercial and office areas in this part here with downtown it's gonna be a very high density we do not want that when it comes to our industrial parks if we do that with our industry the huge trucks that that industry generates will just bring our entire road network to a grinding halt people won't be able to get to work deliveries won't be able to get through it's just going to be chaos and we don't want that 
So we're going to do our best to keep these zones from getting too dense. And we're going to make sure that there's lots of options for accessing them from the highway and from the middle of town. Uh, so all of our secondary roads plug in through here and all of our arterial roads plug in to our industrial areas. Uh, so that makes for easy access all the way around. Uh, we also did not build our interchanges for our highway too close together. We only really built this one interchange. Uh, it's plenty far enough between so that Sims have opportunities to switch lanes once they get on or once they're trying to get off uh, from uh, one of those interchanges to go to the next uh, stop, whether it's, especially if it's in town. So we are going to slide into 9,500 population here in a second. We are going to drastically increase the size of our city here momentarily. It looks like our unemployment number is pretty low, 5%. We really need to get more Sims moved in here. It looks like we've got plenty of room to do it. Let's go ahead and get up to 9,500 and then we'll continue. Okay, our big town is now a small city. And as a small city, we'll have access to rail transportation. So we can build train stations, cargo train terminals, uh, all sorts of different kinds of stations that come with uh, DLCs, as well as cargo stations, which are going to be critical coming up in the future. Uh, our next goal is to become a big city, which we're going to be able to add crematoriums and water treatment plants. Uh, for right now, let's go ahead and I did not add any cemeteries. We need to make sure we've got more than one cemetery here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add one right over here outside of downtown. That should help keep our cemeteries efficient, also keep our land value high. Speaking of land value, let's take a look at that and see where we're at. Ah, oh, we're getting some green in here now. That's a good thing. Uh, and our land value is up to 30 credits per square meter. Um, now, since we've got some office development, it looks like in here, or we'd like to have some, let's go ahead and upgrade some more of these roads. Uh, and we'll actually dentify a little bit here too, just to increase the size of our city over time and make it so that we've got some residential traffic moving through in high enough quantity that we can see how our grid performs. So let's go ahead and we will add some residential right over here near our park. Actually, let's dezone that first. All right, that's dezoned. And we're going to dezone over here too. And we want some more office. Actually, I'm going to make this a shopping area over here. So I'm going to make this commercial. And that means that I should make this office. Because we want to create a buffer between our noisy commercial. If we take a look at our noise pollution view. We can see that our commercial creates a lot of noise. And that spills over about a block, maybe a little further. So we're going to add some more commercial right here. I probably want to add some office through here so that I don't have too much noise spilling into the residential neighborhood. We can keep things relatively quiet. All right, so that should take care of things for a little while here. 
I am going to go ahead and speed up the clock and let some of that fill in and let some of this here fill in. Okay, let's see how we're using our real estate here. Let's see if I forgot to rezone anything. Looks like I might have here. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill these in so I'll get the rest of those zones to fill up. Should be in pretty good shape here from the looks. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more residential high density right here. Okay, so that looks like that's filling in nicely. Let's take a look at our education levels. We're doing it on elementary schools, we're good on high schools, and we're good on universities, so our Sims are educating, getting an, educa getting an education, so that's good. Let's look at our unemployment. It looks like we're still screaming for Sims, not so much jobs, that is true. So we're gonna ha slow down the clock here, and I'm going to go ahead and expand to this down below here. Okay, so I have drastically increased the size of my city. I added at least four more blocks by, I don't know how many, uh, to the south. I have put in a new arterial road. I know it's going to be needed. Uh, I know that I can actually build an interchange right here that won't be too close to conflict with this interchange with High Street. And I've already set up all my junctions. I added a couple power plants. I also added some more water capacity so that we're good there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete, uh, re remove this landfill since it's now empty. And let me check my garbage capacity. It looks like I need another incinerator. I'll go ahead and build one right over here. It looks like if I build them over here, it's going to create too many garbage trucks going down to that intersection. Uh, at least if I build them over here, they've got a little more options. A little more in the way of options. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that street through and fix. I might really want that stub there right now. I'm going to go ahead and check my water. That's good. Let me make sure my intersection is set up right. So now... Our Sims uh, will be able to get the garbage trucks through right in here. We'll have to worry too much about getting those through. Uh, we've got plenty of capacities to be able to get uh, people to work. Even if they have to cross all the way from here to here, there's lots of commercial jobs and shopping located conveniently for anybody in the city. And uh, we're we, we have good routes that are able to be used for, you know, any kind of traffic issues that we might need to handle. So let's take a look at our traffic detail. We see that downtown, being as we have a full grid, uh, even though we've densified quite a bit, those are some pretty big buildings right there. 
we don't really have any traffic problems. There's nobody waiting to get through. The stop signs aren't backed up. If they do, we can turn them into a traffic signal, but right now we don't really need to do any of that. The only real places we're having any trouble with traffic uh, are really only one place we're having trouble with traffic, and that's right here on Mill Street where it's crossing Main Street, and that's been a problem since the get-go. And if, if you look, you can see that some of it's because of delivery traffic blocking off flow, which really kind of stinks. Uh, since there's really not a whole lot we can do about that except for maybe dezone this and rezone it as office. Office won't have as quite so much traffic. It definitely has less than industrial. It won't take those big trucks. Uh, but it'll have less than commercial too since it won't have to take deliveries. It only has people coming and going from work. And this is backing up a little bit. So what we can do to improve flow there if we really need to, it looks like that might actually do okay. Let's see if it clears. It did not. So I'm not really sure if that's gonna clear in the next cycle or not. It looks like it might. We'll find out shortly. If it doesn't, then I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade that little section uh, to a two lane, uh, six lane road right there. And it looks like it's doing pretty well. It looks like just deliveries caught that up. Let's see how we're doing over here in Forest Park. We do have a lot of trucks going through here. That's getting jammed up pretty good. Let's see if we can get that to move a little better by changing that into a traffic light. I should get things moving a little faster. Now, another thing that we might want to consider doing here, since we do have uh, the infrastructure in order to do it, we've got this big, long street. Mill Street just stretches all the way across and so if you're coming off the highway, if you're a truck or you're going to work or whatever, you can get off here at Main Street and you can go out here. But if you're coming from this side of the highway or just this highway in general, and maybe even in this direction, it might be faster for you to go on High Street, get off at that exit. The problem with that is that you've got to make a left turn right here in order to get back on the highway. Uh, you've got to make left turn here to get on to High Street and then you gotta go over the bridge. Now like we said a million times over so far multiple routes diffuse traffic so we could build a bridge right here and diffuse the traffic by making it so um, anybody entering and exiting the highway over here can just go right over here on this overpass so why don't we go ahead and add an overpass. This will require a little bit of surgery to uh, make it so Mill Street can go up here. We'll lose some access to some land in here, uh, but we can build some cul-de-sacs on either side to restore that and be able to build uh, rezone in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that is set up. We've got a nice alternate route right here. And that will allow us to allow cars and trucks to go ahead and go, you know, just bypass all of this. Um, we need to change our traffic signal here back into a stop sign. So we're able to access Forest Park from just, you know, both sides of the highway instead of just the one side. Now it looks like we're running out of work. We have the opposite problem of, that we had before. Let's take a look at our unemployment. Well, we're still at 5%. Um, the Sims are clamoring for more industrial or office. I'm not sure I'm going to give it to them right now. We're going to see how things take shape. 
one of the things that I think we're going to have to uh, deal with here soon too, although uh, why don't we just go ahead and, and put it off for the time being, is uh, we could build an interchange right here. I actually had planned to, uh, but I'm not going to do it just yet because we don't really have the traffic levels at this point. Now if I ever develop this here with more industrial, then I'll definitely need it. So. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the clock, and while I'm, I'm working on waiting for the things to you know, fill in here in these neighborhoods, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and set up my districts a little bit more meticulously. Let me see if I can, oh, let me, that would be why this isn't filling in yet. Let's go ahead and zone it so that it does fill in. And I will be right back once I take care of this and get the other things I mentioned done. All right, so we're a big city now. We have access to water treatment plant and our crematorium. We only have 4,000 more citizens to add before we have uh, come to the conclusion of our tutorial. Um, so let's take a look at how things are developing here. We've got uh, most of this area is filling in nicely. We've got a little bit of uh, abandonment and later labor shortage, but uh, for the most part, we've got a really strong core developing right here in the center of our city with lots of big buildings. And what we don't have are traffic problems. Let's take a look at our traffic detail. Things are still moving along quite nicely everywhere we look. So... Now let's go ahead and add some crematoriums here and get a little better coverage uh, for our death care. Alright, so the other thing we're going to do here now that we've got our death care uh, coverage set up nicely, that should pretty much cover the entire city. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people have observed is that there are death waves that happen with city skylines. Uh, that's because all the sims that are added to the game are all the same age and they all die at the same time. So if they all move in at the same time, uh, then they all die at the same time. <laughs> so uh, I like to have a few extra crematoriums around. Uh, also backs up my cemeteries in case they fill up. Uh, you lose the land value bump from a cemetery once uh, that happens. Uh, so I like to have that backed up nicely with some crematoriums. All right, so let's make sure we're taking care of our trash. Looks like we need to add another incinerator here. Um, Another thing we need to take a look at is our police and fire coverage. It looks like we could do a little better here on the outskirts of town, so I'm going to go ahead and add a fire and police out here. Just to make sure we keep our coverage strong. Um, and then let's take a look at our school situation. It looks like we need more elementary school, so let's do that too. Okay, so we're pretty good on elementary schools now. We've got coverage in most of our city. That's pretty solid. Let's see if uh, high schools, we could use another one of those. So let's build that. Let's put one over here on this side of town. That should do it. And then our university coverage should be pretty good already, which it is. Um, 
and our healthcare coverage. Let's look at healthcare. Looks like our one hospital is taking care of most of the city, so we're going to be happy with that. And uh, let's go into our info views and check our unemployment rate. We're at 11%, so we could definitely stand to add a few more jobs. It doesn't look like we've got a lot of abandoned stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some industry right down through here. Um, that's going to definitely cause us some problems with traffic because everything that goes along this road is going to have only the high street interchange to rely on. So we'll probably build an interchange after this too. Okay, so it looks like we're about full as far as our residential capacity goes, so I need to expand the city a little bit. Uh, but I just wanted to take a look around, and let's take a look at traffic detail here. We're going to have a lot more traffic coming down Forest Avenue right here. With this one interchange, this is going to get bottlenecked eventually. I'm going to go ahead and let that happen, and then I'll show you what happens when it looks like. Uh, when things get unbottlenecked. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have uh, added that section of the city. I need to go through and fix the intersections, but either way, I have uh, I've added a park right here at that corner uh, just for looks and to increase land value, of course. I've kept up with zoning commercial along my arterials, and then I've got residential right here. That should be enough to get us to 20,000. Uh, let's take a look at our traffic uh, situation. It looks like it's doing pretty well. Um, I definitely want to, uh, at some point, build an interchange here. I might as well just go ahead and do that right now uh, so you can see the final result. Now, this is going to be a little bit different of an interchange. I do have just about enough room for a diamond, uh, but I actually want to build a road that runs off in this direction and this direction along the lake. So I'm not going to build a regular diamond interchange. I also have this intersection here that would be way too close uh, to really build a, a good effective diamond. I don't want to reproduce the same problem I've got up here. So I'm going to actually make that uh, partially a half clover and a little bit more than that. So I'll be right back while I work on this. Well, it looks like I became a grand city without ever solving, uh, finishing my interchange. I'm going to go ahead and finish the interchange and come back to this. There's not really anything to write home about, um, just that we are coming to the conclusion of our tutorial here.
Okay, so I finished setting up our interchange here. I've got it set up so that I will be able to extend that road off along the lake or along the highway, either way I want to do it. I have made it so that it actually curves around the lake. I'm just going to end High Street right here, and I'm going to end Mill Street right there too for the time being, uh, because uh, then I can build some nice lakefront housing right through here, some little neighborhoods in the next tutorial. Uh, looks like I need to add another power plant here. Let me go ahead and do that really quick. So uh, what this has done now is made it so that all of our traffic doesn't have to get off on the one exit at High Street. It also makes it so that it'll be able to get it easy to get on and off uh, right here by our new street right here. So um, this should promote good traffic flow. Shouldn't have any issues. If we take a look at it right now, we're definitely not going to see much in the way of red right over here. Uh, even this isn't bottlenecking. Uh, that is a bottleneck still, but as you can see, there's a delivery going on right here. That's definitely not helping our cause at keeping that moving. So we might really want to re rezone that if we expand our industrial park over here in Mill Park. Um, our city center has a, amount of, a decent amount of traffic. It's busy through here, but um, it's dense enough we've got our residential commercial and office close enough that if we take a close look we can see all sorts of people walking all over the place so that's a good thing that means that they're not taking a car to work or to school they're walking and that's going to save us a whole lot of uh, money on infrastructure it's going to keep things much more convenient and livable for the sims um, quieter because of the lack of traffic so as you can see it's a busy city but it's not stifling uh, because of all the traffic going through we've almost got 21,000 sims in population here uh, we've got all of our main services covered for the city all we have to do is add some rail and make it so our industrial traffic will be even a little lighter yet. It does, that'll save us from having to build a lot of infrastructure along our highway as well. Um, you know, when you really get down to it, this is a, uh, a pretty large city, and we aren't having any problems at all so far. And a lot of that's because we've got the three interchanges here along the highway. Everything is all on one side of the highway. Even if we wanted to go to the other side of the highway, there's lots of extra bridges for our secondary roads to get across. That's all good traffic design. We have uh, our zones are planned out so that we have all of our commercial along our arterial roads. That keeps us from having any traffic jam on two lane roads where they can't handle quite as many cars. If a truck has to make a delivery, at least one lane of traffic is getting through. Um, our office is very close to our high density residential. That makes it a lot easier for Sims to get to work without having to drive, which keeps a lot of traffic off the street. And we're keeping our trucks out of the main part of our city uh, simply by keeping it close to the highway where it's easy for the trucks to get access. So we can expand quite a lot, which is good because we're going to double the size of the city. We're gonna be over 40,000 in our next tutorial. So please come back. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. We hope you will subscribe so that you can see the next part. Otherwise, uh, so long and take care and, and enjoy having a big city, or at least a reasonable size city, uh, that isn't bogged down with traffic. And as you can see, we are having absolutely no financial problems whatsoever either. Uh, so tune in next time where we'll focus on increasing the size of our city, increasing the connectivity of our city, and uh, bringing it about halfway to our conclusion uh, where we'll be a megalopolis. Thanks so much.